With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The Eric Erickson Show across the nation. The phone number 877-973-7425. If you would like to be a part of the program. Uh, look, th there are all sorts of ways I suspect to handle all of the various storylines that are shaping up around uh, the FBI going after going into Mar-a-Lago, Scott Perry's cell personal cell phone being taken. Now some various Pennsylvania legislators are being looked at by the FBI. There's clearly something happening, and it clearly relates to uh, the riots of January 6th. There's concern in Trump world that uh, someone around the president has a wire. There's a mole, a source. What is the Biden administration coming after all of that? Um, I want to go in a different direction for now, however. I think it's, it's important to proceed in a different direction. I want to talk about the alleged threats of violence. In particular, I want to talk about all of the claims and concerns and the like that there's going to be some sort of coming disruption in the national discourse. The idea, as it were, that people on the right or violent extremists. We're hearing this more and more from people in the media. Um, we'll get into Biden, the historians later. Joe Biden had another group of historians who showed up at the White House to give him a bunch of bad advice. I mean, the last time they were there, they told him he could be FDR with 50-50 Senate, so I don't know why he's listening to a group of progressive uh, MSNBC talking heads. But there is this uh, view on uh, TV shows, on news networks, that the right is increasingly violent. Uh, I saw someone characterize Fox News the other day as essentially an ongoing drumbeat for civil war. That's how they characterize the network. If you look at uh, the ratings, I don't know if you've seen the ratings lately, but Fox News' day part and night part dominate every other cable news network. It's impressive. And the media, of course, is upset about it. But I want to I, let me just let me just start with this. We'll get into everything else later, but um, it, I, I really, really want to want to talk about this first. I think this is the most important thing. You're hearing a lot of people in the media talk about threats to the uh, judge who issued the warrant, Jeffrey Epstein's former lawyer. You're hearing that there are uh, rampant threats towards the FBI and rampant threats towards Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice. Y'all, someone showed up outside Brett Kavanaugh's house intending to assassinate him, and the Democrats didn't do anything. You've had ongoing threats to members of the United States Supreme Court, and the Democrats didn't even pass the law yet. Yet, it's still pending. They have not passed a law to up security protocols for the Supreme Court. You had riots throughout the United States after George Floyd, and the media called it mostly peaceful. Why should I take them seriously on this? Why should you take them seriously on this? If they're only going to look in one direction for violence and ignore all the others, why should we Play along. 
So when you get into seminary, uh, one of the things you, you are forced to do when you go to seminary is you have to confront the criticisms. There are lots of people who are insistent on debunking Scripture and the veracity of Scripture and the historicity of Scripture. And they, they all have different points, but, but the bottom line is this. They essentially what they try to do is they try to discredit scripture, just the historicity of it. Did these people exist? We're not even talking about is Jesus the son of God, but did he exist? And what they all do is they hold scripture to a different standard than they hold everything else. When you want to go find something, guess what? You're going to go find it. This is one of the concerns with the FBI investigation about Donald Trump. When you want to go find a crime, guess what? You're going to go find a crime. When you set out to find something, you're going to find it. Or when you set out to not find something, you're not going to find it. Very few people want to go into it with an open mind. This biblical skeptics, when they go into it, guess what? They, they, they find all sorts of things to be skeptical about. Those of us who go into it wishing to find faith, well, we find faith. And those people say we're, we're, we're the malcontented souls, the misguided souls. Why? You know, when I go to college, when you go to college, when you've gone to college, if you go to a, a college where you've got to take a religion class, the entire religion department is designed around trying to convince you the Bible's not real. Those of us who are of faith went to college and were challenged in our faith, and we came out still believing. Those who went in not believing came out stronger atheists. Very few people go into college atheists and come out believers. A lot of believers go to college and come out atheists or, or now skeptical and agnostic. The entirety of the experience designed by the left is for people on the right to have to question their worldview. People not of faith to question their faith worldview. And the same is happening here. Pay no attention to violence on the left. You're not allowed to pay attention to violence on the left. Everyone in the media, everyone in Washington wants you to believe it's violent extremism on the right. It's the right that's the extremist. It's the right that's violent. It's the, the, it's the white nationalist. You know, there was the uh, Muslim men in New Mexico who had been murdered, four of them murdered. The prevailing conventional wisdom of the elite is that it had to be some MAGA person with a red cap who was the murderer. Go look for the white nationalists in New Mexico. I saw someone say, well, New Mexico is a very blue state. It's going to be very easy to find the, the Trump supporters who did this. It was a Muslim man who did the killing. They've arrested him now. But the media is of the left. Undoubtedly, it is true that there have been threats. Undoubtedly, it is true that uh, there have been people misbehaving, doing things they shouldn't. Undoubtedly, it is true there is a strain of violence running through the right. There is, even among some of my friends, the inevitability that America is over. Uh, you better stockpile your ammo now because war is coming. There is an inevitability on, uh, for some people on the right who really do believe war is coming. They're not going to fire the first shot, but by God, they're going to be ready to defend their home and their family and their freedom. These become self-fulfilling prophecies. Do understand that. They become self-fulfilling prophecies. There are people on the left who want this country to come to an end. I mean, here's the thing. You've got an entire group of people on the left Seeding the 1619 nonsense, claiming that the country was founded on slavery, is inherently systemically racist, and everything about it, all of its Republican institutions are discredited. The Senate, an institution to prop up racism. The Electoral College, an institution to prop up racism. The Republican Party, an institution to prop up racism. Hello, Abraham Lincoln. States' rights, something you say to prop up slavery and racism. 
And they don't believe these people are turning to violence. They don't believe the people doing this are trying to undermine the country. They don't believe the people who are doing this are trying to discredit government. They don't believe the people doing this could fester and cause violence. You've got an entire environmentalist movement in the world, not just the United States, that claims that we got 10 years to save the planet or else. And do you know the diehard environmentalists? They're furious with the Democrats for their climate change bill they just passed. They say it doesn't go far enough. we got less than a decade to save the planet. Greta Thunberg is going to cry. They're gluing themselves to asphalt streets in Europe. They've dismantled and sabotaged railroad tracks in this country. But it's the right that's violent. There is a there is an and here, by the way. You do have to concede there are people on the right who are violent. You do. It's true. There are. There are a whole lot of people on the left who are as well. But the media doesn't talk about them. The media says they are mostly peaceful. The media says their protests are mostly peaceful. The media says, well, they're just a fringe group. They're, they're not the majority. You're just nut picking. You're picking out the nuts and extrapolating it as the whole. But by God, the whole of the right, they're nuts. No. There are nuts everywhere. The problem, of course, is that people in the media tend to be of an elitist mentality. They believe they and the elite know best for America. Most of the left are upset Uh, that it is the rest of the country standing up to the elite. That's why they give the left a pass. I mean, if the elite had their way, every white kid in America would be told that they are an oppressor and would be brought before the, the struggle sessions and forced to apologize for the sins of their ancestors. It's the rest of us who are the bad ones. And this is why we can't have nice things. This is why we can't move forward, because you have an American media that lacks humility. You have an American media that lacks self-reflection. You have an American media that is all in on the left. You have an American media that tells the stories that Democrats want told at the expense of everyone else. You have an American media, so in the bubble of the Democrats, they have become a mouthpiece of the Democratic Party, and they skew and shape the news to benefit the Democrats, and there's a problem. Americans have not seen the right take to the streets, burning down American businesses. Americans have not seen the right start gunning down police officers in their cars in the name of social justice. Americans have not seen Republican lawyers, Molotov cocktail, police cars in New York City and be let out of jail. Americans have not seen a group of middle-class white people running through the streets of Waukesha, burning down businesses. Americans have not seen that from people on the right. They've seen it from a lot of people on the left. And yet the media wants you to know it's only the right that's gone violent in this country. When you see reality and hear something else said on television, guess what? you tend to stop believing the reporters. Their credibility tends to go away. And you know what the solution is for the media? They double down on the lie instead of trying to find the truth, and it just further discredits them. Hello there. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you would like to call in, Operators are standing by. The Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, directed the Internal Revenue Service not to use any new funding from the Democrats' health care and climate bill to increase the chances Americans making less than $400,000 a year get audited. The letter to IRS Commissioner Charles Redding comes amid attacks from Republicans. Now, wait just a damn minute. She can always walk the letter back later, can't she? She can. She can 87,000 new IRS agents. Have you heard about the ones they want for an IRS police force? That's right. It's not an urban legend. The IRS has actually yanked it off their website, but people downloaded copies of it. Uh, They want to hire an IRS police force. 
where individuals will be uh, encouraged to carry guns, maintain a level of physical fitness with which to um, uh, proceed in police raids, and uh, conduct search warrants and detain individuals with guns. Um... You can write a letter to the IRS and say, don't do this. But it doesn't mean you mean it. Also, do you know how small businesses work? When they say uh, Americans who make less than $400,000 a year won't be audited, a lot of small businesses in this country make more than $400,000 a year, but less than a million dollars a year. But once they paid their employees, their owner may take home less than $100,000. But they're going to get audited. They're over $400,000. The small business will get audited. Because of pass-through taxation, they'll get audited. That's what this is for. The gig economy workers, y'all are going to be targeted by this. And you can say, well, she says Americans who make less than $400,000, but what does your LLC make that passes through the income? Hmm? Hmm? What does your LLC make? What does your partnership make? What does your escort make? Those are small business entities. If you don't know what they are, the you, you, the reason number one reason you want a corporation or a business entity is not to protect you from the IRS but to protect you from a lawsuit you put your business in a company and that company thereafter um that that company gives you a liability shield when you're sued only the assets related to the company can be targeted not your personal assets that's why you have a company But what the IRS allows for a lot of companies is flow through taxation, meaning you don't pay a corporate tax and then you pay an individual tax. You let all the expenses and stuff come out of the company and then whatever is left over, you get taxed on. So after you paid your employees, you paid your expenses, you have $399,000. Oh, you're still getting audited because the revenue income to your small business exceeded $400,000, even though you only had $399,000 left over, of which you take home $100,000 because you got to leave $299,000 in there to keep growing your business. They are so coming after all of you, and only liberals are the ones who refuse to recognize what's going on. Hi there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. I should take some phone calls now. We have people wanting to talk. David, I'm going to go to you first. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show. David, how are you? Hey, good. Uh, A couple of questions I had. And uh, so uh, one of these is on the burn pit bill. He said the Republicans were blocking, blocking that because the funding was not aligned correctly or wasn't. Yeah, yeah, they, they so gave up blocking it and let it pass. Okay, but so nothing was changed in it? Nope. Um, they, there was such a backlash to them doing it that um, the Democrats allowed them a vote to strip the provision. The vote failed, and the Republicans went along with the legislation anyway. Okay, and then the other thing was in the climate health bill. They said that the Republicans blocked the uh, uh, discounts for insulin and I was just questioning how how were they blocking that if they were against the bill altogether? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it's actually the, the real issue here wasn't that the Republicans blocked the insulin provision. It's that the Senate parliamentarians said it was not germane to the legislation because it's new policy. Um, if the Republicans had joined the Democrats and two-thirds of the Senate – voted to say it was fine, then the parliamentarian would have been overruled. But uh, the Republicans did not vote to overrule the parliamentarian. Therefore, the Democrats say it's Republicans' fault. It was really the Senate parliamentarian uh, who said it couldn't fit in the bill. Gotcha. Yep, that's it. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely, David. Sure, absolutely. 877-973-7425 is the number. Let me explain that one for you because it's it's a little bit nuanced. So reconciliation – You can do it a couple of times a year in the Senate, 
and it's to uh, come up with a budgetary framework. And the budgetary framework essentially says, here's what we're going to do for the next year, and we will build the federal budget around this framework. It can pass without the filibuster. The filibuster is not part of it. What happens is you're only allowed to add things that do not impact the budget or impact the deficit. If you want to do a bunch of spending, you have to do a bunch of tax increases or cut elsewhere. But the really big one is you can't do a new policy. There can be no fundamental change in public policy in this. So, for example, uh, for, let's take the climate legislation, the climate part of this legislation. And by the way, it is worth noting that there were still none of them are talking about it as uh, a inflation reduction measure. It's all climate now, climate and healthcare. But the climate measures that they're doing, they're, they, it's, it's policies, they're expanding policies and spending money on things the federal government already does. So it's nothing new. It's just expansions of current policies, more subsidies in certain areas and stuff. It, and none of it is brand new stuff. With the healthcare stuff, uh, they're giving Medicare more power to negotiate to lower the cost of certain medicines. The insulin provision is unique and a new policy because nothing related to insulin had been done specifically in the legislation in the past. And because nothing had ever specifically been done about insul insulin in legislation in the past, it was a new policy. And therefore, the Senate parliamentarian said, you can't do it in this. Now, there's actually bipartisan support to do it. There is bipartisan support to pass this provision about insulin. But the Senate parliamentarian said you can't do it in this legislation. The Republicans were unwilling to vote for it in this legislation. They want a standalone bill, so they refuse to overrule the parliamentarian. The Democrats are spinning it as the Republicans killed this. Not really. There are Republican votes to get it done. They just weren't going to do it as part of reconciliation because they refused to vote on the total package. Therein lies the problem. And therein, as well, lies the truth of what actually happened. Now, I got to play you some audio. Couple of pieces of audio here. This is from MSNBC. Another big takeaway from this polling that could have pretty major implications in November is that 60% of Latino voters now say the country is on the wrong track. That number is even higher in some key swing states like Florida, like Nevada. Yes, like Florida, like Nevada. And this is one of those Latino voters. Housing is a big thing for me. Um, I think I, I think it's absurd how expensive things are getting. I'm a teacher in Boston. And I can't even live in Boston to teach. Rent is also going up really high. I'm really scared. Mine goes up in like two months, so I'm like really scared to figure out what that's going to be like. So y'all know I've talked about Roy Texera. He is the progressive pollster and data analyst who's been telling Democrats for some time that uh, they got to wake up to the reality that Hispanic voters not only are not woke, but they hate the wokes and they vote like the white working class. This is from him. Democrats are having a great deal of trouble holding on to the Hispanic voters. In 2020, running against Donald Trump for a second time, in the midst of a COVID economic crisis and after the George Floyd summer of racial reckoning, Democrat Joe Biden actually did quite a bit worse among Hispanic voters than Hillary Clinton did in 2016. According to authoritative estimates from Democratic big data firm Catalyst, the Democratic advantage among Hispanic voters slipped by a remarkable 16 points in the two-party vote between the two elections. That doesn't mean the Democrats lost the Hispanic vote, far from it. They still got a solid majority of the group's vote. But the size of their majority was whittled down considerably and appears to be falling even further. The seriousness of this problem tends to be underestimated in Democratic circles for a couple of reasons. One, they don't realize how big the shift has been. And two, they don't realize how thoroughly it undermines the most influential Democratic theory of the case for building their coalition. Over th On the latter, 
Consider that most Democrats like to believe that since a relatively conservative white, especially white working class population is in sharp decline, while a presumably liberal non-white population keeps growing, the course of social and demographic change should deliver an ever-growing democratic coalition, the rising American electorate, as they call it. It is simply a matter of getting this burgeoning non-white population to the polls. But consider further that, as the census documents, the biggest single driver of the increased non-white population is the growth of the Hispanic population. They are by far the largest group within the census-designated non-white population, 19% compared to 12% for blacks. While their representation among voters considerably lags their representation in the overall population, It is fair to say their voting trends among this group will decisively shape voting trends among non-whites in the future, since their share of voters will continue to increase, while black voter share is expected to remain roughly constant. It therefore follows that if Hispanic voting trends continue to move steadily against the Democrats, the pro-Democratic effort of non-white population growth will be blunted if not canceled out entirely. Exactly what happened in 2020. This radically undermines the Democrats' rising American electorate theory of the case. Digging deeper reveals even more problems. The Democrats' slippage among Hispanic voters in 2020 was all over the country and among all the different ethnicities lumped under the Hispanic label. The biggest damage was among Cuban Hispanics, a 26-point decline in Democratic margins, and in Florida, down 28 points. But the damage went beyond that. The Democratic advantage among Hispanic voters declined 18 points in Texas and Wisconsin, 16 points in Nevada, 12 points in Pennsylvania, 10 points in Arizona. Among Hispanic ethnicities, the Democratic margin was down 18 points among Puerto Ricans, 16 points among Dominicans, 12 points among Mexicans, 18 points among other Hispanic ethnicities. Neighborhood and precinct level analysis of the 2020 election by the New York Times and Equus Research confirmed the extensive nature of these shifts showing up in Latino heavy neighborhoods from New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, Houston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. Data sources also agree these shifts were primarily driven by non-college educated working class Hispanics who make up the majority of the Hispanic population in America. Democratic fortunes among Hispanic voters have not improved since. Two recent polls from the New York Times and Quinnipiac have the generic congressional ballot for 2020 tied among Hispanics. Biden's Hispanic approval rating in the two polls are 32% for the New York Times poll and 19% for the Quinnipiac poll. Other polls have Democrats doing somewhat better among Hispanics, but still running far behind their traditional margins. This is a problematic trend for Democrats who had counted on the burgeoning Hispanic population to be the bulwark of their coalition, insulating them from the negative effects of declining white working class support, a group many in the party had written off. There's always been something problematic about the Democratic Party's fixation on the white working class, wrote Sally Cohn, the CEO of the Movement Vision Lab. It's clear the obsession isn't fraught with bias. It's just dumb. Well, Guess what? Turns out in abandoning the white working class, they've abandoned the working class because working class voters are more ideologically aligned than any other group. They see things eye to eye regardless of what their skin color is. Now, I want to go back to this MSNBC audio. This is really important here. Listen to this audio one more time from MSNBC at the very end. Listen at the very end of it. Another big takeaway from this polling that could have pretty major implications in November is that 60 percent of Latino voters now say the country is on the wrong track. That number is even higher in some key swing states like Florida, like Nevada, like Florida, like Nevada, where Adam Laxalt, Republican Senate candidate, is running against an incumbent Democrat and could very well beat her. These are the problems the Republicans have to deal with and the Democrats have to deal with, and the Republicans have better solutions for dealing with them because the Republicans treat the Hispanic working class voters of America as Americans. And the Democrats treat them as Hispanics. The Democrats view them as a racial group 
Republicans deal with them as patriots. And the way you treat this group matters greatly. Treat them as moms, treat them as dads, treat them as doctors, treat them as lawyers, treat them as electricians, treat them as plumbers, treat them as hardworking Americans. Don't treat them as a racial demographic. And the Democrats are so obsessed with intersectionality and racial demographics, they're losing these voters. They're losing them. It's going to be to their detriment. But America will be saved by Hispanic working class voters. We'll all be Catholic country music listeners before it's all over, thanks to the Hispanic working class. Now, I got to tell you about Eden Pure because they've got this deal running, and I've told you about it, the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. You can get three of them for less than $200. You save $200. You get free shipping, and you wipe out odors. Oh, did I get a funny email yesterday from a user of the Eden Pure Thunderstorm that I can't tell you about? Really? I shouldn't talk to you about it? Let's just say this person was able to cover up some smoky odors that weren't related to tobacco with the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. (laughs) I thought it was actually pretty freaking hilarious to get this. Nonetheless, I've been telling you guys I use it for fry odors in the kitchen. I've used it on my back porch. I've gotten cigar odors out of my car. Uh, It really is a great eliminator of odors. It doesn't cover them up. It's not an essential oil. It actually eliminates them. You get three of them for less than $200. You go to EdenPureDeals.com. You put in the discount code ERIC3, E-R-I-C-K-3, ERIC3, and you will get three of these for less than $200. They fit in the palm of your hand. You keep one in your suitcase. I'm staying in a hotel tonight, so I got one in my suitcase. But my hotel is too nice to be smelly. But nonetheless, I keep one with me. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code is ERIC3, E-R-I-C-K-3. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. John, I'm going to go to you. Welcome to the show, John. How are you? Uh, Doing fine. Uh, I've got a question about the power grid in Texas that I haven't been able to resolve, and that is, how did they get in such a position with the windmill uh, power system? Uh, Were they ordered by the federal government in some instance to put all these windmills in? Uh, No. So, So Texas maintains its own power grid separate from the rest of the nation. And right. the Texas Railroad Commission, uh, yeah, the Railroad Commission, um, actually oversees a lot of energy in Texas, oil and gas and, and power grid, among other things. And, and they pushed for Texas to become more and more renewable. Uh, and what they did not expect and did not prognosticate for is the massive growth in Texas. And because of the massive growth in Texas, um, they needed more baseload power than they had, and they didn't build more baseload power in Texas. And then you had this calamity of events, I guess, a uh, winter ago, where they had the, the coal power plants were offline for repair. The nuclear power plant couldn't keep up, and then the solar panels got too much snow on them, and there was no wind, so everything shut down. It's funny. I haven't heard any mention of how they're planning on resolving this. Yeah, yeah, I haven't either. Um, You know, there is – there's an inquiry in the Texas legislature right now uh, on what needs to be done, including building more baseload capacity in Texas. The other thing they've got to do, John, is they've got to upgrade their lines. This is something very much like what happened with the uh, California situation that was actually far worse than the Texas situation where they were intentionally, willfully having to turn off power in areas where there were high winds for forest fires. In California, they could not upgrade the power facilities or the power grid because they were under demands to switch to renewables. And if they didn't switch, they were going to get fined so much, they wouldn't have the money for upgrades. So they said, to heck with the upgrades, let's just go into renewables. Well, they let the lines fail. And the lines started sparking calling forest fires. We've got a problem around the country with this. Some areas do it good. Um, What should we dig? Southern Company down in the south, uh, Alabama Power, Georgia Power, Florida Power, they tend to be way more responsible in the southeast than a lot of these others are because they, they've had to deal with so much skepticism in the South on renewables. You've got Plant Vogel coming online down in Georgia to add more baseload capacity, but you've also got solar down there as well. This governmental push to get states to switch to renewable energy sources or clean energy sources, I should say, because they're not that renewable, um, is a problem. 
not because we shouldn't be headed there long term, but because we got to figure out base load capacity first. As states grow, you need power that can come on with the flip of a switch. And as states are growing and rushing towards clean energy sources like uh, solar and wind, those aren't base load capacities. You can't flip a switch and make the wind blow. You can't flip a switch. We don't have the battery storage technology available right now in order to be able to store the power either. And because you can't do this, you've got to have either natural gas or coal burning plants, or you've got to have nuclear plants. Now, nuclear is the obvious solution, and we have brand new nuclear technology that could be deployed, but there's still such skepticism in this country of deployed nuclear power, and you don't have the brain trust in this country able to build it. What we really actually could use is the federal government stepping in on this and saying, you know what, we're going to help step in and cover the cost of these nuclear power plants and get people up to speed and get people going and get people building them, you get this capacity going for nuclear power plants in the country, then we have less to worry about as a nation. And then we can concentrate on the power grid and not have to worry about all the wind and solar, which, by the way, with the wind and solar, it's really resource intensive. And we don't talk about that because we don't see it here. But it increases our dependence on China and other countries to get the resources needed to build the solar panels and even, frankly, to get the the, uh, windmill turbines constructed. Build nuclear power. We decrease our dependence on others. It's kind of smart to do it, which is probably also why it will not get done. When we come back, Joe Biden has met at the White House with a group of historians. We're warning him civil war is on the horizon. He must act. The same historians who told him he could be FDR with a 50-50 Senate. We must discuss this, and I'll take your phone calls, 877-973-7425. With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, We've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.